Greetings, fellow mathematicians. This is quiz one for my Calculus 2 course covering substitution. If you want to make an attempt at this, pause the video and give yourself about 10 minutes. And when you're ready, let's get to the first problem. For this first problem, we're going to choose u as negative 3x plus 5. We're going to calculate the differential du. It'll come out to negative 3 dx. And in order to properly convert this from an x integral to now a u integral, we're going to want to bring that negative 3 to the other side and write that as negative 1 third du equals dx. That's going to allow us to convert each piece here. That'll convert to e to the u. And dx by itself, what we just found down there, negative 1 third du. So if we go ahead and convert that, we get the integral of negative one-third e to the u du. And that should be very straightforward to integrate. Negative one-third is a constant multiple. And an antiderivative for the exponential function is itself. And the last step is just to back substitute our u, which was negative 3x plus 5 and we get our antiderivative, negative one-third e to the negative 3x plus 5. And don't forget the plus c. All right, let's go ahead and get to problem two. For this integral, we we'll want to recognize that the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x which is close to that factor that we have in the numerator. So to make the substitution and conversion a little bit more obvious, let me go ahead and rewrite this. I'm gonna pull the sine of x term next to the differential dx, and it'll make it a little bit easier to see the conversion here. We're gonna choose u as the entire denominator, 2 plus cosine of x. We're going to calculate the differential. Your derivative of 2 is 0. 2 is a constant. And the derivative of cosine, that's negative sine. Now, if you look at the factor that you have up in your integral up here, you have sine of x dx. But we have du as negative sine of x dx. That's not a problem. You can bring that negative to the other side and write that as negative du equals sine of x dx. And if you go ahead and convert everything, this fraction, that's gonna to convert to three divided by u. And sine of x dx, that converts to negative du. So if we put this all together, we get as our integral negative 3 over u du, and that will integrate. Negative 3 is a constant, and 1 over u, that integrates to natural log. So we get natural log of u, and we just need to back substitute u as our substitution, which was 2 plus cosine of x. So we get our antiderivative as negative 3 times the natural log of 2 plus cosine of x. All right, let's go ahead and get to the last problem. For this integral, notice that we have an inner function, x squared plus 1, inside a set of parentheses all raised to the ninth power. And that's going to be our clue here for trying a substitution, u, as x squared plus 1, that entire inner function. Now, the derivative of x squared plus 1, that comes out to 2x dx. And we have x dx in our integral, but we're missing a factor of 2. So to make the substitution and conversion easier, let me rewrite this. We'll keep it as the integral from 1 to 2. 
I'll write it as x squared plus one to the ninth power, and I'm gonna move that x next to the differential dx. Now, we can go back to our differential over here, and notice we can solve that for x dx. We can divide the two to the other side. So we'll write 1 half du equals x dx, and that's gonna allow us to convert each piece. That part's gonna to convert to u to the ninth. x dx converts to 1 half du. And a good habit to get into, which I always go through in my Calculus 2 course, here we're doing a substitution for a definite integral. We have limits one and two on the integral, and we're gonna to wanna to convert those as well. So we can go ahead and do that pretty easily. We have our original x limits going from one to two, and we're gonna convert them to new u limits using our substitution, which we chose u as x squared plus one. So if we go ahead and plug in x as one, looks like here we're gonna get one squared plus one. So your new lower limit for the u integral will be two. And if you plug in two for x, you'll get two squared plus one, five. So that's gonna be your new upper limit for the u integral. If we go ahead and convert this integral, this is now an integral from two to five. Those are your new u limits that we just calculated and converted down there in the table. And the rest of it, we have a factor of a half and u to the ninth. And at that point, the integral should be very straightforward. We have basically a power of the variable the one half is a constant multiple, and we just need to apply the power rule for antiderivatives. So add one to that exponent, you'll get u to the 10th, and then we divide by that new power. And that's gonna be evaluated from u equals two to u equals five. Now you can clean up those factors of a half and one tenth, write that as one over 20, u to the 10th, and now we'll evaluate from u equals two to u equals five. And if you go ahead and plug that in, we get some powers here, five to the 10th power and two to the 10th power. You don't actually have to calculate those, but you can simplify this as one over 20, factoring that out from both terms and then five to the 10th minus two to the 10th. And that's as far as you would need to take it in my Calculus 2 course. You could calculate that if your calculator is capable of it, but not needed on one of my in-class quizzes. And that's it for quiz one. Hopefully you learned a lot from this. If you did, support the channel, like, and subscribe.